elbows to the sky, chest up. Well, what do I do now? The problem with this is that we're learning how to overhead squat from an incredibly difficult position. And why are we going over the overhead squat? It's because that's the one thing we equate with the bottom position of the snatch. Very distinct differences between going like this and then catching the bottom of a snatch. Okay, so oftentimes CrossFitters come into the gym, they improve their fitness, they improve their strength drastically, but their numbers in the snatch or the clean and jerk uh, falter or they just plateau completely. And so what I wanna do is address the distinct problems that I see over and over again in CrossFit gyms. And even though this is just for CrossFitters, a lot of people have this issue who are Olympic weightlifters, uh, people who are power lifters who wanna do Olympic weightlifting, anyone that wants to improve their snatch and clean and jerk. And we're gonna work on the snatch today. So when we look at what was kind of taught to us in the level one of uh, CrossFit, and this is why this is important because the level one teaches people who teach other CrossFitters. So this is how uh, this knowledge gets passed down to us uh, from person per to person. The, the thing that we're taught is the overhead squat. And we're taught it from a very difficult position of doing it. And so when people fail doing this overhead squat with a PVC pipe, the, uh, you know, the person who's running the class or the seminar staff basically says you have an immature squat or you're not ready, so you have to continue to work until you do this the proper way. What I'm here to tell you is that, no, that, that's not the case. We can expedite this process and get you to overhead squatting, but getting a better bottom position in your snatch much, much faster. So what we were usually taught in the L1, if you wanna go like at an angle this way, so yeah, beautiful, is get the bar overhead and then they always say, I think it's elbows to the sky. It's or, like palms up or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, palms up like you're holding a, a tray. And then like, I wanna see your armpits, okay? This is what we would call external rotation. They wanna see it as much as you can. So you're here and it's great. And they say chest up and we wanna see hip crease below the knees. But we also wanna see, you know, maintaining that posture as you squat down. So the new squatter or somebody who's just kind of new to the gym or, or maybe even the intermediate, right? They start the squat and they get to about here and they're like, well, what do I do now? Because I'm not allowed to shift back, right? Or else that's an immature squat, okay? The problem with this is that we're learning how to overhead squat from an incredibly difficult position. And why are we going over the overhead squat? It's because that's the one thing we equate with the bottom position of the snatch, okay? There are, there are very distinct differences between going like this and then catching the bottom of a snatch, okay? So what I wanna do is reverse engineer this entirely. We're gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna work our way up, okay? So Dylan, I think same kind of directions yeah. here in line with this. We're gonna ditch the PVC, screw this thing, okay? Put your hands down. What we're gonna try to do is develop a, a balanced bottom position without any care in the world for our posture. Okay, sounds pretty counterintuitive. You would never be told this anywhere else. No. It's okay to have bad posture when you're learning things and then work towards better posture. Okay, so what Dylan's gonna do is, don't worry about his back, he's just gonna get his hip crease below his knee crease. Okay, there is a distinct difference here between this point and this point. Now, stand back up, Dylan. If I say, make sure you have a really vertical torso and Dylan's even an intermediate lifter, okay, there's a chance that he's gonna start doing stuff like this just to stay upright in the name of staying upright, okay? It hurts. Yeah, now try getting, try getting pretty low, pretty low. Just chest as vertical as you can, okay? That may seem like, oh wow, good position, <laughs> Dylan, great position, because like his chest is up, but he's missing out on this many kilos, okay? <sighs> and the odds are when he has the bar overhead, the bar's not gonna be in this weird external rotation position where he's up here. It's actually gonna be kind of behind him and now he can sink, sink, sink and now I can just stack kilos yeah. on top of him, okay? So, got this nice little thing right here. Okay, so here's how we're gonna combat that. Can you see him, Nico, when he sits down? Okay, 
Dylan's just gonna sit, not worry about anything. He's just gonna sit down. Okay, he's already in like a pretty good position. But let's just say your feet are out. Yeah, right there. Or you're, they're like kind of forward. Yeah, okay. He can't stand up from this unless you like heave hose into it. So what we're gonna try and do, see, we're gonna bring our heels back towards us and we're gonna start kind of inching our way in like this and pulling our posture up. You notice how he can have great posture and he can have a noticeable displacement between his hips and his knees. This is because we are working from the bottom position up. Our goal is to be in the bottom position. So why are we learning the overhead squat and the snatch from this position? It makes no sense. So the more time that you guys are here, the better. Learn how to be here. Because if you want to catch snatching, <laughs> catch snatches, and you're here, and you just kind of go to here, well, yeah, you're not gonna, you're, you're limited by your range of motion. So all he's gonna do now is he's gonna reach his hand slightly forward, and he's just gonna hinge, go, 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 and stand. Pretty easy. Okay, come back down. He can sit back. No, 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 uh, hips in the same place. Just chest back, yeah. All he's gonna do is reach and stand. As he kind of comes forward like this, there's tension build up uh, in his adductors and it allows him to stand, okay? We are simply going to do that with a barbell in our hands. It's so easy, okay? So actually he's gonna put this on his back. He's gonna sit back, just relax, like he's taking a shit, relax, okay? <laughs> now he's gonna posture up. Now he's gonna press the barbell overhead. Now he's gonna do the same thing, hinge and up. Wow. Whoa. Okay, so let me take that. Couple key things here. It's, it's, it's very important that you guys understand that it's not just about having a vertical chest because if you noticed, Dylan had to not have a vertical torso angle at least. His posture was really good, but he actually came forward like this. In the snatch, the bottom position of the snatch, when you're training it, you need to work on being able to have a slight angle and then being able to put the bar over like the base of your skull. Yeah. It's not just sitting vertical so that you can have the bar over the base of your skull. See? You can, you can come forward like this as long as you are able to go up like this. So that's what we're working on. So Dylan, this time when you stand, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna kinda keep your hips in this angle, see? Oh, just hold torso angle? Yeah, hold torso angle. So come back down, relax, sit back, sit back, or sorry, like that, there we go. Now press, now lean and stand and hold torso angle. He is ready to squat now. No one in CrossFit has ever <laughs> said to hold torso angle and squat. I can guarantee you. Look at his head position. Look at how locked his elbows are. Look at his scaps, they're pinched together. If you guys learn how to do this, it will change everything for you. I can promise you that, okay? Now we're gonna move on to the pull. Okay, the two-pronged attack. So we have our first place of attack is the bottom position knowing the difference between learning an overhead squat from standing, learning it from the bottom, and also learning how to be compressed into the bottom position as low as we can. This is how we're going to fix our pulling woes, okay? Now, what I've seen from elite CrossFitters is that they do make really good hip contact, but there are certain aspects of their lifting where they're losing a lot of power. They love to hinge, and in doing so, the way that they hinge and get the bar into them is just kind of have this general bend in their arms. Now there's nothing really wrong with a bent arm, contrary to popular belief. If you can maintain the bent arm, some of the best weightlifters who have ever existed have a slight bend in the arm at contact, okay? But that's a little bit more advanced. What I see with a lot of CrossFitters is they use that hinge, they use their glutes, they use their low back, and they kind of pull from here off of the floor. And then to make contact, they just go. 
literally. Right, exactly right from like. the knees, they just go. Never really using what, their what, their legs. <laughs> the beta is a what? Using their what, their quads. <laughs> using their what, the biggest muscles on their body, the quads. Okay? <laughs> like, awesome. Hips, low back, great. great. Super strong, definitely use them. But we have to know how to use both, okay? The number one drill for this, actually, let's see if I can demonstrate. At 50? <laughs> hey, this video just got a little more entertaining for y'all. Now look, like, it's debatable whether that technique, because you see it in the elite CrossFitters, is actually good for CrossFit, right? It's, it's something that I think you can do under pretty good fatigue, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not like, but then again, the best, Guy Mayeros, uh, Matt Fraser, even Brent has a pretty good snatch, yeah. right? These guys are all doing it the right way. So there's a couple guys who I really don't like their technique, but they're still lifting really big weights. It's because they're strong and athletic. They're strong and athletic. Like they have good bottom positions. It's the thing, I always say right? that. You could be strong and athletic and still lift a lot because you're strong and athletic. You could be doing a ton of shit wrong but you could be doing more if you fix those little things. Yes. Being strong and athletic will get you far, but it won't get you as far as you can. Go. All the guys that are strong and athletic can, it's two options. One of them is more likely in CrossFit, but all those guys can pull the shit out of the bar. So they can, they can pull, they can power snatch a million pounds. Yeah. Or they're really good in the bottom position. Yeah. Just yeeting and praying. Yeah. And if you're a CrossFitter and you can yeet and pray, you're gonna get pretty far. But we wanna fix some shit here. You don't have to do that. Okay, so here's kind of what I'm thinking about with the CrossFit snatch. It's this right here. I think. I don't even know if their feet are loud. I don't know. No, they kind of slide. Yeah, they kind of slide. They just like really fall into that position. That was pretty good, though. Yeah, it's not bad. Might have been a little too good, but okay, it's all right. So I know the fix to this problem. Okay, it's being able to keep your feet flat through as much of the pull as possible. How often do we talk about this shit? I try to talk about it pretty often. It's pretty much the one marker when we look at a snatch or a clean and jerk, or clean, sorry. When the bar is at the hips or maybe like an inch away from the hips, what are we looking at? Yeah. The feet, the feet, the feet, the feet. If you're here, by the time you're making contact, you're not using your quads. Yeah. If you look at my like 50 and 70 kilo snatches, when I make contact, my feet literally look like this. I wanna get it in the camera, but the plates are blocking. I'll literally extend and it'll be like, like it's like my flat feet are just coming up. I'm pushing through the whole entire foot. So this fucking drill right here, actually definitely straps. Yeah. Definitely straps. This drill right here, this is it. This is the drill that's going to solve your woes. You're welcome. Okay. Now, what we want to do is be able to have that bar travel high on us with a good posture. So travel high, meaning like approaching the hips like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to control this part right here. Notice how I'm at the hips and my feet are flat. Yeah. What we're doing that is with overloaded weight. We're doing it with heavy weight, okay? Here to here, here to here. What you're gonna see a lot of times with people who are pretty good snatchers is they're just gonna go like this. Yeah. Okay, because they wanna extend, extend, extend. It's like, you can get your extension work in. Here, we're learning how to have flat pressure when we extend or when we get to extension. Yeah. Okay, so this pull, go ahead and- Are we just doing like deadlift do, to the hip? We're gonna go, I want you to pause here and then we're gonna float the bar two inches. Yeah. And pause. Yeah. And float and pause, just dead, just okay. dead. Wonderful. And then we'll do the next version next. Look at his shoulders. What's holding the bar in right now? Lats. Lats, Maybe. if he lets go of the lats, there's where the bar wants to go. Okay, pull it back in and go back down to floating. And go. And floating, last one. And go, good. Okay, so 
wildly important, guys. And we, what we don't want to do is just lock the knees out. Yeah. Okay? So we have this balance in the foot that we're trying to achieve when we get to these spots. Here, 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 here. Similar to holding your torso angle when you stood up from the squat yeah. and being able to, 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 um, to, to squat again. I mean, it's like making the pull a leg movement. If you did a squat and the first thing you did is that, it's no longer a leg movement, it's posterior chain. So if you do that in your pool, it's gonna be a lot of posterior chain. To get those legs going, you need to maintain torso angle and actually push. And obviously your torso angle is gonna be a little more exaggerated than a squat, but as long as it's locked and you're pushing, you're using those legs. Okay, so now we're gonna do like a slightly more dynamic one. And this one's gonna be the up, down, up, yeah. down, up, down thing. And do you raise the bar at all after contact or are you just kind of like chill uh, with it? Like, like the yo-yo snatch? Little, yeah, you just kind of squeeze a little I'll bit. I'll do exactly what we did, what we just did on the yo-yo snatch. Just without the pause? Yeah. Okay, so now we're just gonna do without the pause. Don't actually snatch. No, I don't know if my hip could handle That's that. That's cool. So we're just flowing on this. Yep. As he passes the knees, he's pulling in like this. Relax. Nico, can we get an angle from the back here? I want you guys to pay attention to what his back looks like as he approaches the hip. This is how you learn how to develop tension in the arms, okay? Because we're just, we're told arms are noodles in this. Watch his back. Kind of comes together. Beautiful, good. All right, y'all. That is advanced, I guess, techniques for people who kind of like, they, they want to achieve more in this. They're not entirely beginners, but they find themselves plateauing. That is usually a CrossFitter. That's why we titled this video what we did. But I guarantee you it's beneficial to the overall athlete, okay? Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, follow this mf -er on Instagram, Dozer. Just search Dozer, you'll find I'll him. I'll be there. Follow me on Instagram, coach underscore ZT, and follow Nico, Nico Flores, 73. See you guys later.